Hey guys, this is Jacob Circle here, and today we're going to be talking about how to do physics and rigid bodies inside Blender itself. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank this user for the tutorial suggestion. If you guys have any suggestions, please leave them down in the description below. And also subscribe to the channel to get more awesome tutorials like this. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are in Blender 2.83, but this hasn't really changed for that long, so you can really work in any Blender version. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and set up a simple scene and test around with some physics and stuff. So first of all, I'm just going to enable snapping up here and then bring this cube up one notch like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a mesh and uh, a plane, sorry, uh, and just scale that up a bit. But basically we are going to make a wall of blocks so we can knock it down with physics. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and make a nice little rectangle selecting our default cube. We can hit S and then X to scale it on the X axis and just make it a nice little rectangle like this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move all of the camera, light, and plane to its own collection by coming over here and adding a collection. And we'll uh, name this one Non uh, Physics, like this. And then, so again, the cube, or sorry, the plane, light, and camera. I'm just going to move all of those to this non-physics section. So we just have all the physics objects in the same collection. So now we are actually gonna create the wall itself and I find an easy way to do that is to actually do it through modifiers. So if we come over here to the modifier tab and then add a array modifier, you'll see that it looks like it extended the cube, uh, but what it actually did was uh, create a duplicate and offset it like that. So we are gonna offset it 1.1 in the X and then for the count, we're just gonna increase that to something like 10 like that and you can see it duplicated it 10 times in the X direction. Now we can set up another array modifier, but this time uh, instead of it being in the X direction, we want it to be in the Z direction. So if we type in one like that, maybe let's do 1.01 .01 like that, uh, just come to look on size and you can see we have just barely a gap and this will help us when we actually add physics to the scene. Uh, and so then we also want to um, adjust it in the X a little bit to kind of make it stack like a brick pattern, if that makes sense. Uh, so just in the X we want it a 0.5. Um, that's actually a little too much. Um, I think it's a 0 0.05 like that. Yeah. So. Uh, that's that's looking good right now and of course let's increase the count to 10 again uh, show, so we should have this effect. So now if I select this you'll see that all of the cubes are still selected but we really want each individual rectangle to be its own object. So to do that we're just going to go ahead and come over here and hit apply to both array modifiers and then if we go into edit mode by hitting tab and pressing A to select all the vertices and faces and then you want to right click and come down to separate by loose parts and so now all of these are individual objects their their own cube but if you see if i rotate it all of them are rotating on this origin point right here so we actually need to change that uh, i'm going to go ahead and hide this non-physics collection just so we can work with all these objects uh, and then right here let's go ahead and just drag click all of those like that and then if we right click again, we should be able to set the origin and we want to set that to uh, origin to centered of mass volume. So now you see that all of the dots actually align to the center of each cube. So now if I rotate them, uh, they rotate on their own origin. Now to actually get a wall shape, I'm going to go ahead and drag and bring all of these over by hitting G and then X and then bringing those over a little bit like this. Uh, again, just keep the snapping mode on and it should just drag over and have the same spacing like that. And then um, I quickly just gonna delete these ones over here because these will, won't really be needed. Um, so now we have our wall. If we go ahead and unhide the non-physics layer, you'll see that our plane is kind of off. So let's go ahead and adjust that um, just by moving that around and then scaling this up a bit. So now we're actually gonna add our ball. And so just go add mesh UV sphere like this and then we're just gonna scale this up. Gonna go ahead and turn off snapping uh, like this. Just make it a decent sized ball. Um, just move it wherever you want it basically. Uh, and then I'm gonna right click and hit shade smooth. Okay, so now we have all of our objects actually set up in the scene so we can go ahead and start working on the physics. 
So physics in Blender is actually a really easy thing to do. Um, first, we can look at the actual physics tab. Uh, so if we come over here to the uh, physics properties, we can see all these uh, fields and stuff. Um, we're actually just going to be talking about uh, rigid bodies in this uh, tutorial. But I do want to make some other tutorials for these physics things, so make sure you subscribe uh, for those. So with our plane selected, we're just going to go ahead and tap rigid body over here and you'll see that this menu now pops up down here um, these are the settings that we can set for it uh, and all of the different like dynamics and if they go into surface response we can set the friction and everything the only thing that we have to do for the plane is to just uncheck this dynamic box basically dynamic means that it's going to be affected by gravity and since we want this to be our ground plane we don't really want that falling and being affected by gravity Next, let's set up the actual physics for all the cubes. Uh, so we're just going to go and select this top left one right here. Uh, and then again, come over to rigid body and select that. And you'll see that again, this menu pops up. We actually don't need to do anything with this. These are the default settings for any rigid bodies that we want to move and actually be affected by the environment. So if we go ahead and press play, you'll notice that this one falls and hits the ground. Uh, but you will also notice that none of the others move in. So you might be wondering how we can actually uh, get all of them to move at once instead of having, having to select each one individually and setting it to a rigid body. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and hide the non-physics collection. I'm also going to come up here and hide the sphere like that um, so that we just have all the cubes in the scene. So if you remember, we have already set the rigid body for the top left one. And so now we're going to go ahead and shift select all of these right here and making sure that the top left one is the one that is highlighted yellow. And so now we can come up to the object tab and go down to the rigid body section and hit copy from active. So now if we look at all these, these all have the same settings as the active one that we selected up here. So now if we unhide everything, um, we can actually see when we press play that all of them are now affected by gravity and they stay in place on the plane. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly set up my camera. So just coming up here to where I want the camera, then holding control alt and then pressing zero on the numpad. Uh, you'll see that we have some clipping issues. So if you ever have that, um, what you can do is select the camera object up here and then go to the actual camera tab and the clip start and end. We just wanna increase that in uh, until we can actually see the objects uh, so if you're having that problem, quick tip like that. Um, and so now we actually want to make the ball hit the wall uh, and for it to be physically based and everything. So an easy way I find is to actually play around with the animation of the ball. And then right as we want it to hit the ball, we can disable the animation and enable the physics. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so to start, we want to set our ball somewhere around this area uh, like this. And then just go ahead and hit I, make a location keyframe. And then just come, I would say, 10-ish uh, frames down. And we're going to go ahead and move the ball so it is almost about to touch the wall. Wherever you want um, this to touch, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and then again, hit a I for a location keyframe. Uh, so now, if we come down here, we can right-click and hit interpolation mode linear so that it's a linear uh, change across the keyframes. So now if we play this, we'll notice that it's a little bit slow, so I'm going to take this keyframe and just move it over a little bit to make it a bit faster, and then just move both of these a little bit out so it doesn't start immediately. So now if we play it, we can see that we have this effect, um, but you'll notice that it stops before it hits the wall and we want it to go through the wall. Um, so first of all, we got to actually set the uh, sphere to be a rigid body itself. So again, come to the uh, physics tab, then rigid body. And so this is the interesting part. Uh, we actually want to click animated. This basically tells Blender that the ball is going to be animated and so to not use the gravity of the scene. And so we just want to make sure to click this little button right here to set a keyframe. And then we can come all the way over to where our ball is about to touch the wall. So the last keyframe you made previously. And then just come over and turn the animated button off and set another keyframe. So now if we view the simulation itself, you should see that the ball starts out as an animated object but then transfers to a rigid body. So you'll notice that the ball kind of bounces off the wall and doesn't really go through it. And so an easy way to change that is to actually uh, mess around with some of the mass uh, of the ball and the objects itself. So uh, you can come over here to the settings tab, again selecting the ball in the physics tab, 
and play around with uh, the mass. Uh, let's try five uh, kilograms. And yeah, so now you can see it goes through the wall. That's actually a little too much. I just kind of want it to barely break through. Uh, so again, you can just play around with this, just trying to get the best result for what you're trying to accomplish. So I think this is uh, the result I was looking for. Uh, and so you can actually see that some of them are falling off the edge over here. So we're just going to come back and scale this up uh, and it'll continuously bake. Um, so now we should see that it continues. Uh, but you'll notice that they are like sliding a bit and I don't really want them to slide. So uh, next let's look at how to fix that. So the first thing that we're going to do is mess around with the friction of the actual plane itself. So we can just increase that to like this. And now if we go back and play this, we can see that the friction has increased a bit, but it's still not enough. So what we can do instead is actually increase the friction of the blocks. So again, let's hide the non-physics tab and the sphere back here. Uh, and then we're gonna select this top left one again. Uh, and then we're gonna come back to the physics tab to friction, and we're just gonna increase it this a bit. Um, but you'll notice that these blocks down here are still the 0.5 uh, uh, that we had as default. And so we're going to do that same thing, just select all of these, make sure that this is the active one, come up to object, object, rigid bodies, and then copy from active. And now you'll see that all of them have this friction value. Uh, so on the hiding everything and turning our uh, collection back on, we can see and now we can see that the friction is actually a little bit more realistic and it doesn't slide across the plane like before. So one thing that you might run into is blocks passing through some objects. So if we look to the side view right here, you can see that uh, th when this cube hits the ground, it's actually going underneath the plane. So an easy way to fix that is to actually play around with some rigid body world settings. And so to do that, we're gonna come up here to the scene properties and then go to rigid body world. Uh, then coming all the way back to the start down here, just make sure you're on frame row one. Um, the steps per second and the solver iterations, uh, the higher those are, the longer it's going to take to actually calculate, but the more accurate the results are going to be. Uh, so I'm just going to increase both of these to, I would say, 100. Basically, just keep increasing these numbers until you find what works for you. Okay, so now that we have the simulation to our liking, we can actually bake in the physics so that none of the physics change anymore. So to do that, you want to come over here back to the uh, scene properties and then come down to rigid body world and then open up this cache section and you'll, you can see a simulation start and end frame. Uh, you can just match that to whatever you want. I'm just going to leave mine on the default uh, and then just bake uh, this right here. And you'll notice that it kind of comes across here. And now if we look at this, uh, every time we play it, number one, it'll be faster in the viewport. Uh, and number two, every time we play it, we will notice that um, the blocks follow the same path and don't really deviate uh, due to random circumstances. So these two blocks are at the same location. Okay, so those are the basics to rigid bodies. I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this scene uh, so we can actually get a final render out. Okay, guys, this is the final result on the screen right now. I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, but again, this was just kind of a beginner tutorial about rigid bodies. Uh, if you do want me to make a more advanced tutorial, please leave a comment in the comment section below and please like this video. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Again, like and subscribe to the channel. It uh, really helps me out. Also, check out my other tutorials if you're interested. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Peace.